I was born enslaved on the Missouri plantation of Moses Carver in the late 1860s. Orphan after the Civil War, I lived with my previous owners, Moses and Susan Carver. As a weak and chronically sick child, I often assisted Susan with chores around the house and was allowed the liberty to play and explore such hobbies as gardening, fishing, and botany. Although my early desires to obtain an education were often denied, I took advantage of small school sessions throughout Kansas and eventually graduated from high school. I was accepted at Iowa State College of Agriculture and Mechanic Arts, where I devoted my academic life to the pursuit of sustainable plant life and the productivity of Southern black farmers. Over the course of my life, I invented more than 300 products and edibles from sweet potatoes, soybeans, and peanuts. I formed a friendship with Henry Ford and later worked with him to incorporate some of the soy innovations into his automobiles and alternatives to plastic and steel. Ford admired my work and later became my biggest advocate, honoring and preserving my contributions and accomplishments. In 1896, upon the completion of my master's degrees in agriculture from Iowa State University, I had three employment offers. My alma mater wanted me to stay on to join their faculty. Booker T. Washington at the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama offered me the position of director at his newly built agricultural college and Mississippi's Alcorn Agriculture and Mechanical College offered me a position on their staff. In addition, both Henry Ford and Thomas Edison offered me substantial salaries to join their companies, but I saw the most potential at the Tuskegee Institute. I accepted the position of director at the Agriculture Experiment Station, which was authorized for the Tuskegee Institute by the Alabama State Legislature. This allowed me to continue my research and experiment at the Tuskegee Institute, which led me to develop many innovations with sustainable crops. For the next 40 years, I devoted my time to working on these innovations and to teaching Southern farmers how to better use their crops and land for industrial purposes. The first time I actually met Henry Ford, I was 73 years old. In 1937, he hosted the National Farm Kimmerge Council in Dearborn, Michigan. Kimmerge, a division of chemistry, focused on the industrial use of plants. I spoke about my research on the sustainability of peanuts, soybeans, sweet potato, and the common weed. I explained how these simple, and easy-to-grow plants could be used to create industrial and cosmetic products. Henry Ford in the audience was captivated by my ideas and methods. During the conference, Ford and I met, and I learned more about his innovations and plans. Ford believed he could apply my research and methods to the automobile industry, especially in producing plastic, paint, fuel, and other products. He always sought out new opportunities for technology and ways to improve his products and increase his productivity. Ford once predicted, the time is coming when we shall grow most of an automobile. The farmer will raise the raw materials for industry. We established a good friendship, made a mutual advice and respect for both our personal and professional interests. For many years, he owned a plantation in Ways, Georgia, and sought my advice on many of the concerns and questions that he encountered. And between the many visits that occurred, either I to Michigan or Georgia, or him to Alabama, we wrote numerous letters to one another. I often advised Ford and his family about recipes that I had invented using soybeans or peanuts, or ways to cure illnesses with plants. 